So you watch a speedrun and you need a way to keep track of your times. Thankfully, speedrunners have an amazing tool at their disposal called LiveSplit. In this video, I'm going to teach you the ins and outs of LiveSplit. Whether you want to make an immaculate LiveSplit layout or just have something to track your times, this guide will be here to help you achieve your goals. Firstly, we're going to go over the basic functions of LiveSplit and splits in general. LiveSplit is a timer that keeps track of individual sections as well as the whole time. Splits are a section of this timer. So if your run has 10 splits, then there are 10 individually tracked parts of the game. The reason for this is that you're going to want to track where your improvements can be made. Breaking it apart into splits makes this process super simple. To set up splits for a game from nothing, simply right click on the timer and hit edit splits. Then insert your game's name and run category. Once this is done, you can insert some splits. How many you want or need depends on the game and personal preference. Personally, I suggest if you're running a game that other people are also running, you should set your splits up similarly to how they do. This makes comparing times much easier, but is not mandatory at all. Firstly, you need to see if your game has an auto splitter. An auto splitter is a tool that is used inside of Live Split to read game memory and split automatically on certain actions within the game. Where this splits exactly depends on the game and the auto splitter. You can adjust where this happens in the settings section. If your game does not have an auto splitter, you're going to need to do what is called splitting manually. This means you're going to need to split via a hotkey. If you're going to set up splits on your own, then you should take note of good times to split. Split on sections that are consistent and can be done easily. For example, you can't split during the middle of a boss fight, but when there is a loading screen, that is an excellent time. You don't want to have splits that are any longer than 10 minutes. This can be counterproductive. Where these splits are will depend on whether or not you have an auto splitter. Most large games do have auto splitters. If your game does have an auto splitter, it'll generally show up in this section here. If so, click on Activate in Settings. This is where you'll be able to customize where the game splits and if it automatically starts or not. If you're using an auto splitter, you will need at least as many splits as there are sections ticked off in this menu. Load removers also function the same way. However, you need to right click, compare against, in game time. Comparisons. Each split in your splits holds some information, your personal best split time and your best ever split time. When you're running your splits, you have what is called a comparison running. By default, this will be your personal best. This means that your current run is being compared to your personal best. So if you're 10 seconds slower than your personal best, you would be behind 10 seconds. However, personal best is not the only type of comparison you can do. You can also compare against your best segments. This is useful when trying to figure out what the best possible time can be. However, I do not suggest doing runs compared to some of best as it will kill your ego. The next comparison you can use is average splits. You will need to do a few runs before this works, but this compares against, you guessed it, your average split times. After that, you have real time, which is just a regular stopwatch, and in-game time, which is used for games that have an in-game timer or a load remover. Checking these comparisons can be very insightful. For instance, if you're going to run a game with a load remover and an event where your real time is important, you could change comparison to see what your real time average is. Now that you understand the timer functionality, we could dive into the aesthetics and the bonus section of Live Split. Layouts. If you right click and do Edit Layout, it brings up the Layout Editor menu. From here, you could change the overall layout. You can remove and replace any of these components, but from the start, you will have Title, Splits, Timer, and Previous Segment. The title says just the game and the category. Splits are a thing that you will always need. These keep track of your times. Timer is the overall timer. Previous segment is a tool designed for you to use to see your comparison of the previous section. If you click the minus sign, you delete the section that you have highlighted. If you click and drag items to rearrange them in the way they show up. Top, down. Clicking the plus sign will have a pop-up menu appear that shows you things that you can add. Firstly is timers. There are two types of timers, the regular timer and the detailed timer. This detailed timer shows two different comparisons and two segment times. Each can be hidden and the comparison can be customized. Next is lists. This contains your splits and a newer type of splits, subsplits. 
This type of split is used as a folder of sorts. Let's say you have a section with a castle, but this castle has 10 smaller sections inside of it. You would have 10 subsplits inside the castle split, and those splits would only appear when you get to the castle section. After that is the information group. This group has all the information that you could want. This can show you what you're currently comparing against, your delta for that comparison, the title, any text you may want to present, the current world record, the current possible time save, your previous segment, the total playtime, and many more things. Next is media. This one can be rather fun. Firstly, you have a graph that shows your current run's pace in real time. Then you have sound effects, which allow you to detect sound effects to certain actions like gold splits, resetting, and even getting a personal best. Finally, you can add a video to compare against that will play along with your splits, so you can see exactly where you were in your personal best. Last, but certainly not least, you can add a manual scriptable auto-splitter. This is for if, in instance, your community has not put the auto-splitter on LiveSplit server, you can manually add it here. All of the features I talked about can be directly edited in detail by double-clicking on them or clicking Layout Settings. There is such an insane amount of customization in this program, I can't possibly cover all of it, but I will give you an example of how I set up my splits. First, I right-click and Edit Splits. Insert my game name and category, then activate the auto splitter, go into the settings and select where I want to split. Then I count how many splits I need and add them. Rename all the splits, then, next I switch my comparison to in-game time. Now, save the splits. Next, we do the layout. Right click, edit layout. Double click, layout. Change your picture to your favorite waifu. All done. Also, bonus tip, if you want to have your splits be see-through in OBS, you can change the background color to something very bright and then set up a color key to remove that color. Now that you know how to make your very own live split layout and set it up, you can go start speedrunning. If you need any help with picking a game or practicing, then you should watch the other videos in this series. And next time, we'll be showing you how to set everything up in OBS to record runs for submission to speedrun.com. I also included links in the description for some basic live split layouts to get you started. Thank you so very much for watching and make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Dude, show's over. Make sure to follow Trent Salma if you enjoyed. See you next time.